The neurons comprise only 15% of the cells in the brain, and the rest of the cells are called glia, which means glue. The word means glue. And they've been dismissed for um, nearly 100 years um, as packing material and support cells for neurons. Uh, but there's a lot of interest now in glia based on new techniques that shows us that glia can communicate among themselves, that they can sense neural activity, and that they can cont control neural activity. So glia are different from neurons. They don't have the ability to form, to make electrical activity. So they don't communicate with electricity. They don't form synapses. They don't use synapses to communicate. And the foundation of all our thinking about how the brain works is called the neuron doctrine. And that idea is that all information in the brain takes place by electrical communication between neurons communicating across synapses. Glia don't have synapses, don't have electricity, so it violates that basic foundation of neuroscience. The eyes see what the mind is prepared to comprehend. And as a neuroscientist, we were all taught that neurons did it all. And even though we would look into brain tissue and only 15% of the cells there were neurons, we didn't even see the glial cells by and large. So the neurons were celebrities in a crowd. That's what we saw. We were taught that that's how the brain worked and that's what we studied. Um, we knew the glial cells were there, giving structural support, metabolic support. Those kinds of things weren't very interesting to neuroscientists who wanted to understand how we, the basis of behavior and memory. So it was our preconceptions. Um, secondly, we were using the wrong tools for the job. Neuroscientists uh, like myself used, use electrodes to sense neural activity, electrical activity in neurons, and glia aren't communicating using electric signals so those tools would never be able to sense this communication going on among glial cells. So it took the development of new techniques and those techniques were laser and video microscopes um, that allowed us to see communication because we could see ions flowing in a cell by using chemicals that fluoresce when these ions enter the cell. And when we did that we saw that neurons fluoresced when they fired but we also saw that the glial cells responded to neural activity. That forced us to realize that there's a communication going on in the other brains. Glial research is really a, a new frontier of neuroscience, and so we're just beginning to explore it. Um, we need to begin with the very basics, uh, defining how many kinds of glia they are, there are, and just understanding the basic properties. So we have a lot of basic science to learn about glia kinds of glia. Then we need to understand um, how they communicate and how they interact with neurons and how they do that not only in culture but in the brain which is harder to study but um, is likely to be different and then how this communication and interaction between neurons and glia um, how this controls information processing in the brain and response to injury how these um, how this new dimension of brain function impacts psychiatric conditions, uh, mental, uh, neurological illnesses from migraine to Alzheimer's. HIV doesn't infect, neur infect neurons, it infects glia, but it causes severe dementia. Uh, so there's a lot to be learned.